William with another hot edition. My special guest today, my supermodel, Mr. Zarek. I want to welcome you to Pillow Talk. Welcome to having me in your bed. Yeah, something like that. This is not something that everyone gets to have, you know. This is a privilege. How are you? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? Good, I'm good. So, you're living in New York? Yes, I am. New York City. Um, I'm originally from Miami, but this August will be six years that I've been living here, so I guess you could say I'm an official New Yorker now. New Yorker? How do you like it? I love it and I hate it. Um, <laughs> that's my relationship with New York. It's like, I love the city. I love everything about it, what it encompasses as far as like what my career has given me. I've made some amazing friends, but at the same time, during those months of December, January, February, uh, March, winter. it's not my friend. It was a real refreshing sight to see everybody out and just celebrating who we are, you know, and it's just one more milestone that we've crossed in the gay community to let people know, like, we're here, our voices are going to be heard, and sooner or later, all 50 states are going to have to do right, like, being married. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. At all. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> we I actually have taken over, like, and I think that's the biggest fear that a lot of people have is that, like, there's so much power in the gay community, and it's just like, okay, now if you let them get married, then that's too much power together you know right. but and really all you're just threatening it's your own insecurity it's your own insecurity is right your marriage your right to be married has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on in my life right and but i think i the same right you're right and i think it's bullshit when people say like oh it, it ruins the sanctity of marriage when you have people like arnold schwarzenegger who are having illegitimate children from the nanny hallelujah you know? so, right it's like until you respect the institution of marriage don't tell me about the sanctity of marriage please exactly. Will you be um, partaking of the, any of those marital opportunities anytime soon? Um, you know, it's so funny because, like, I've always been a playboy. I've always been, like, marriage, whether it's with a man or a woman, I don't think it's for me. And I actually even wear a ring. A lot of people already think I'm married. Mm. Um, but... I, I, I would say, like, I wouldn't put it past, you know, myself, like, it, it's definitely a big step whether you're gay or straight, period, being married, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, the day I say I do it, I want it to be forever. I couldn't see myself marrying anybody and then having to get, getting the divorce or anything like that. My mother has been with my stepfather now going on 16 years, and my dad's been with his wife for almost 15 years, so seeing both of my parents stick through each other, through the good and the bad, I can't like get married and then be like, okay, right, I know, I'm divorcing this month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can say that here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like beep, but no. Um, but yeah, I am in a relationship. I've been in a relationship for six years. Um, we just started wearing rings as a commitment to each other. Um. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those things where everything looks good on the other side, you know? Like, I look at my single friends and I say, oh my God, you have so much freedom to be who you want to be. And then they look at me like, you know, you have somebody to go home to. And it's like, when I go home, we're about to kill each other and drive <laughs> each other crazy. But at the end of the day, it, it is refreshing to know that you have somebody that loves and supports you, you know? And you know, I, I was married to my friends for so long, so long you know? right? So and like right. my friends were in my relationships for so long, but you know, and I, I kind of, I still am, you know, because I felt like in the gay community that that's how it happens a lot, you know, like I was ostracized from my family for a long time and my friends were the main focus in my life, you know, and it used to be hard having a relationship because it was like, well, my friends take precedent over anybody right. when it boils down to it. But I finally given myself the opportunity to say, you know, is there, let somebody love you, love somebody. So since you are in a relationship, tell me this, do you have, um any type of online profiles on any sites like maybe BGC or A4A or... No. Okay. I have Facebook. That's enough. Wait, okay. And I don't even do Twitter. Twi do Twitter. Twitter is for tweet. What about your partner? Twitter. Um, no, he's not into social media at all. Um, he just made a Facebook page, um, after, like, forever, but, no, um, when I was younger, I used to have it, but I'm not really into like the whole online type of dating anyway, you know? Like I feel like if I can't meet you out somewhere in public, then I really don't 
I want to be with you anyway. Like, I have so many different standards and criteria of what I will deal with and what I won't deal with. <laughs> and, and I feel like if I meet you online, I'm going to leave you online, Ooh. pretty much. Okay. I was wondering, like, at what point is it, it is it cheating? Because a lot of people, you know, some of the some of the profiles are very explicit on yeah. Tom and others, but also people have sent me stuff on Facebook. On Facebook, that's yeah. Like, not appropriate. I've had marriage proposals on Facebook. I've had like, you know, my inbox can sometimes get full of ridiculous things. You know what I mean? Like, but I think it's about how I handle the situation. You right. know what I mean? Like, and my boyfriend, he hates. First of all, he hates anybody that's not him period I mean he like even like my friends he likes my friends but when it boils down to it like he's like no I love you that's all you need um so when it comes to Facebook sometimes he's like all your fans you know what I mean but like I've had to like kind of let him know that you know I've taken on a different role in life to whereas people have come to me and people want to be connected to me but it's up to me on how I handle the situation and it's up to me to make you trust me and let you know that there's nothing that you need to worry about. And my boyfriend's not black either like he's Italian so you know oh. yeah I'm open-minded like um I've kind of temporarily chosen not to date anyone in the African-American community. Oh. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's explore that. Let's so my next question would be why? Um, I don't eat where I play, pretty much. But, and it's so strange is because becoming popular, you have this eye on you. To whereas like past relationships that I had, I felt were ruined because of the public eye and because of being around. In my relationship that I've been with my boyfriend now six years, I still have people like, does he even exist? Because nobody sees him, you know? And, and I appreciate that because our relationship is protected, our privacy is protected, and we don't have to deal with those, like he say, she say types of situations that I hear about a lot of my other friends going through, you know? Like, I've, I've seen my friends lose their boyfriends because of wanting to be social so much, you know what I mean? And I feel like you should keep your relationship away from the mess, you know what now, I mean? I understand that, but what does that have to do with um, being black? No, it has nothing to do with being black. I love my black boys, but when it boils down to it, like, I just don't want to be with anybody that's in the social circle or in the scene, per se, period, you know? like, And I just, for me right now, haven't found that one guy that is of... My, I mean, because I'm Latin, all I'm I'm Cuban, so the Latin boys are in that same boat too. You okay. know what I mean? <laughs> like, so it's just for me, like if I see them out a lot, you know, like I don't really like my boyfriend to be social in the gay scene. Period. You know what I mean? And it just so happens to be that I ended up meeting an Italian guy who was bisexual, didn't have any gay friends, don't go to any gay clubs, and I'm like, ding. But if you met somebody who were black or Cuban. That had those same qualities that weren't in the scene. Why yeah, would you automatically? But yeah. I haven't found that yet in ten years. So in ten years, some way or another, they end up in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so you've just made a conscious effort to stop dating. To stop, yeah. Um, yeah. Now some of us might view that as a form of self hatred. Um, I love myself. Trust and believe I do. I don't hate me at all. Um, and I don't hate black people. Or I don't hate people of the african-american race it's just for me like there's just certain things like i said that i don't like to have to deal with you know what i mean and i just feel like i've dated black boys and what i have to do with my boyfriend is not the same thing that i have with them you know what i mean like i don't have to worry about my boyfriend and it's a, it's a male thing too where people cheat and stuff like that but it's just I've had to deal with some crazy stuff with my blood, my brothers, and I just don't feel that way about wanting to be with them right now. How do you challenge the white dick that you're sucking? I'm really not a dick sucker to begin with, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but um, one thing that I can say about us is we come from two totally different lives, but together we've learned so much from each other. You know what I mean? Like. I work in fashion, he owns an elevator company, and like I said, he comes from a very strong 
Italian background and I come from a black and Cuban background living in Miami he's from Jersey and it's so strange because it's like we are so different but we've helped each other to grow in so many different facets of life. No, I'm, I mean, I'm all for people just being happy and mm -hmm. finding that and that finding that partnership and finding that love. Yeah. But I do take issue when people, or I, or I become concerned. I think when people say that they exclusively uh, exclude. A group. So I well, it's not exclude. It's just a personal choice for me. You know, I love black men. I love black men, and like, and it's so funny because like, even my boyfriend says that he's like, you always have to have pretty boys around you, and it's the truth. You know, like, um, mm -hmm. I love beauty. I work in beauty. Beauty's a major part of my life, and I love beautiful boys. But at the same time, like, I've come to realize that I don't need to be in a relationship with everybody. Or, you know, I I understand that I can like a person but still allow them the space to grow instead of having to be in a relationship. People are afraid to look outside that box. You know, like I have friends that won't go to white gay clubs. I have friends that won't even consider dating somebody other than a black guy. Black, I have white friends that do the same, you know, like, but I feel like if you stay in that bubble and you stay in that box, you don't really allow yourself the opportunity to see what else the universe has to offer. Say that, say that. Are y'all listening? Are you listening? When they asked me to sign on to do Model City, you know, it was an opportunity to take my career to another level. I had been modeling in New York City since I first came here six, seven years ago. Um, so then, you know, the opportunity to just do the show, I felt was like, you know, that next plateau in my career. And then, you know, they, they were like, would you be okay with being who you are? And I'm like, first of all, I have no choice but to be who I am because if I come on this show and I do anything else, then people are gonna say, well, that's not who he is, you know what I mean? Right. And it wouldn't have been reality. And my parents know I'm gay. My family knows I'm gay. My friends know I'm gay. Like, I've been out in every goddamn city pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so for me, it was just like, you know what? Like, this is the moment that God placed in my lap to say, you know what, Eric? Like, you're a leader. And there are people who are looking at you to be a leader, so stand up and be who you are, and the rest will follow. And, and amazingly enough, to me, it was no big deal. You know what I mean? Right. But then after it happened, my phone was blowing up, the blogs were going crazy, um, and nothing negative ever came out of it. You know, nothing negative at all ever came out of it. And I've gotten like responses from gay men, gay women, drag queens, mothers, fathers, some daddies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of people just were saying like how much they admired my bravery. And I had to take it in because it was like, I don't think it was really me being brave because it was just me being who I was, right. you know what I mean? But you had the courage to be authentic and to be right. honest, and that is, that is brave. You know, a lot of people think I'm crazy or like this or that, you know, because even too, like on the show, I was about to fight on Fifth <laughs> Avenue, you know what I mean? So I'm not necessarily like the best of role models, I guess it is say, but at the same time, like, I didn't really care because I wanted people in the straight community to see like, yeah, gay boys will bust your ass too, right. pretty much. Like, I'm from the hood and when it boils down to it, if I have a problem with somebody, we can take it to the streets. I'm pretty, but at the same time, Vaseline will fix my face <laughs> in two to three days, pretty much. Like, I don't care. I will fight. Like, with all the bullying and stuff that's been in the media over the past year and the uh the suicides, what would you tell a young teenager who doesn't have that confidence that you have to whoop somebody's ass? Mm. If they, or you know what I'm saying, to take it to the streets and they need to whoop. What would you tell them? Um, what kind of steps can they take to alleviate that type of, or deal with bullying? I think the one thing that I would definitely say to them is that it, it has nothing to do with you at all. You know, like I was teased as I, when I was growing up, I used to be called skinny, my teeth were really crooked. I remember second grade, my nickname used to be hydraulics because my teeth were sitting on doves. But, <laughs> and the reason why I can even say that is because that's what helped me get through it was understanding that, you know, sometimes in life we all have our awkward moments, you know what I mean? Like, and 
I can't say that I haven't been on both sides of bullying. I've bullied people, people have bullied me, but what it comes from is being hurt, you know, and in, in, in a lack of necessarily not having self-love within you. So then you take that out and you put it on somebody else. And I've come to realize like growing up, I've seen the people who have bullied me and I looked at the situations that they may have not had or were born into, you know what I mean? And, and what they were dealing with in their own home. I just like to let younger people know like don't give in to what people have to say you know like because when it really boils down to it every man every woman goes home and has the same insecurities i sound i don't like mirrors i don't look in them i never want to see the face that i am you know like right. because i want to always internalize who i am i don't mm. need the outer Not surface the i don't need all of that you know that what i mean that is like, some brilliant advice i mean that's a brilliant truth. way to live and i feel like if a lot of people can do that then they'll come to realize like we we are our worst enemies you know what i mean like i've been in countless magazines i've had billboards and yet i still have a day where i look in the mirror and be like oh god like there's, you see the ugliness in you, or like not necessarily ugliness, but like insecurities will show from a man before you see certain things. I never saw what people saw in me. You know what I mean? Not you, still to not. You know, um, and it's because like I always wanted to just be comfortable with who I am on the inside. You know what I mean? Like I fixed my teeth, I got a little bit more of a body, um, and through modeling it helped me realize like okay, you you are a beautiful guy. You know what I mean? But don't let that external take over who you are on the inside, and that's what's most important to me. You are so amazing, and this is I mean like I, like I said I follow your work. Um, but whenever I look at somebody in a reality or a television type situation, I always know that's only a piece of, a piece of, a piece of who you are. Yeah. Um, but I'm just amazed and I just thank you. So what's next for you? I'm ready to take over the world. Um, Alright, the world is ready. Yes, I hope so because I'm on my way. What do you know for sure? One thing I do know for sure is that I am alive. Right. And living. And well. Living. Life is meant to be lived. Well, I want to thank you, Zara, for thank you climbing for into me. bed and giving me some love here on Pillow Talk. This has just been absolutely amazing. I wish you much, much continued success. We'll continue thank to follow you. Um, and wait, where, where's the best place to find you on? Um, the best place to find me is on Facebook. Okay. You can find me on Facebook. Zara, I'm the only one there. And if you see anybody else that says they're me, then they're probably lying. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, be sure to like his Facebook page. I'll put the link up down below there. Um, again, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I want to thank you all for choosing Pillow Talk. I'm Lana L. Williams. Always stand in your life. Parties, the people, the girls, the boys. Topics, the cities, the